and Matthew Myers and Dana Farber Cancer Institute, you've got a new uh, way of treating lung cancer. Now that's that's pretty amazing because we've heard about some of the molecular approaches that are suitable for non-squamous uh, cell, uh, non-small cell lung cancer, but you have now got something for squamous cell cancer, haven't you? Can you tell me what it's all about? Absolutely. So we have a, at least a first step on the path to thinking about a treatment for, for squamous cell lung cancer. So squamous cell lung cancer accounts for about 30% of non-small cell lung cancers, uh, and it it's not really been susceptible to any of the targeted therapies that are out there today. Why, by the way? So a lot of the effective targeted therapies, EGFR therapies and ALK therapies, are basically only for genomic lesions that are present in lung adenocarcinoma. And those lesions, the EGFR mutations, the ALK translocations, aren't there in squamous cell lung cancers. Now, can you tell me a little bit, of, a bit about this DDR2 mutation? Because that, that's the key, isn't it? Absolutely. So DDR2 is another tyrosine kinase, like EGFR and ALK. And we were looking for tyrosine kinase mutations in squamous cell lung cancer because we wanted to find new drug targets. And we found the mutations in DDR2. They're in about 4% of squamous cell lung cancers. Can you tell me about the study that you've presented here today at the American Association for Cancer Research? Uh, and, and, and you've just published it, of course. Absolutely. So it's just published in a new journal called Cancer Discovery, Journal of the American Association for Cancer Research. And the study is led by a young medical oncologist in my group, uh, Peter Hammerman, who has uh, directed the, uh, uh, the bulk of these studies. What did you do and what did you find? Uh, we were sequencing uh, protein kinases and we found about 4% of squamous cell lung cancers have mutations in DDR2. And then we asked, are there drugs that block DDR2? And if we look at squamous cell lung cancer cell lines that have DDR2 mutations, can they be killed by these drugs? And it turned out the answer to both those questions was yes. First of all, uh, the drug desatinib is effective at inhibiting DDR2. And second, squamous cell lung cancer cell lines that have DDR2 mutations are killed by desatinib. Of course, that's very interesting that desatinib does the job, but it's a sort of proof of principle as well, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a proof of principle, but the exciting thing about desatinib is it's already in clinical use uh, for chronic myeloid leukemia, and so that means it should be relatively straightforward uh, to imagine how to test it in squamous cell lung cancer patients. What do you think needs to be done now, then? Uh, I think it would be great if a clinical trial could be started of desatinib in squamous cell lung cancer. One of the pieces of that uh, with the trial is to develop a method of testing patients for DDR2 mutations and potentially for other targets of desatinib. You've got a new target then for squamous cell lung cancer. What should doctors be making of this discovery and, and what are the hopes? I think the hope is that just like in lung adenocarcinoma where we can start to subset the patients and start to find uh, effective treatments at least uh, for some duration uh, for lung adenocarcinoma, there's hope that we can start bringing similar targeted therapies to squamous cell lung cancer. Do you said that this is present in 4% of patients. That's right. Presumably there could be other targets. Do you think there could? There could be, and we know of some other targets, um, but there are no approved drugs yet for those targets. Uh, two other targets are FGFR1, which is often amplified in squamous cell lung cancer. Uh, that's also a, a tyrosine kinase. And then the PI3 kinase gene, PIK3CA, is mutated in several percent of squamous cell lung cancers. FGFR inhibitors and PI3 kinase inhibitors are both now in clinical trials. Uh, none of those have yet been approved for treatment. But if we add up the idea of inhibiting FGFR, inhibiting PI3 kinase, and inhibiting DDR2, uh, now we've got a significant fraction of, of squamous cell lung cancer patients. And lung cancer is one of the commonest cancers in many countries and certainly one of the most lethal. Uh, how much might this change the picture in terms of therapy, improving therapy, in that one-third of patients who do have squamous cell, non-small cell lung cancer? I think it would obviously make a very big difference for those patients and there are a lot of people uh, with this disease. Uh, there are more than a million people who die worldwide every year from lung cancer. Uh, probably several hundred thousand of those people uh, have uh, squamous cell lung cancer. And so if you're looking at a third of, of uh, squamous cell lung cancers, that's probably tens of thousands of patients around the world. A lot of people who'd have the opportunity to benefit uh, from these new treatments. With the important caveat, if these treatments prove beneficial, because right now there's good evidence for the hope 
but there's no evidence for the efficacy. You've had it in xenografts, haven't you? That's right. Yeah. So we've done xenografts of the tumors uh, from these cell lines, and the xenografts uh, are also uh, treated effectively by the drug. Um, again, it's not the same as treating the patient with the cancer. Uh, there was also one patient on a clinical trial who responded this time to a combination therapy, dasatinib plus erlotinib. They didn't have EGFR mutations that would make sensitivity to erlotinib, but the patient's cancer did have a DDR2 mutation that could explain the sensitivity to dasatinib. So we may have a good explanation uh, for uh, the dasatinib response, but again, it's only in one patient. And are there a lot of TKIs out there ready to treat some of these molecules when they're found? Uh, there are a lot of TKIs that are out there, but most of them are in relatively early clinical trials, and therefore uh, they are not yet approved for therapy. And so I think there's a lot of work to generate the trials and, and find the right data. And an important point I would like to make is I think there are a lot of effective TKIs out there that have not yet been shown to be effective because the right clinical trials haven't been done. The tr clinical trials aren't always selective enough, and it's important to do the more highly selective trials. Mm. So what messages briefly would you give to uh, cancer scientists and, of course, cancer clinicians coming here from the, your presentation at the AACR annual meeting? My uh, first conclusion would be to start thinking about targeted therapies for squamous cell lung cancer, to start thinking about subsetting those patients, and to start thinking about identifying uh, ways in which patients might benefit from new targeted therapies and uh, ways that those trials can be developed and for the cancer scientists, uh, the basic scientists, uh, ways to understand the biology of squamous cell lung cancer uh, so that we can classify the disease and we can see uh, what are the pathways in which drugs might act. And of course overcome some of the uh, feeling of sometimes of futility and hopelessness that uh, both doctors and patients sometimes feel about that, this disease. Absolutely. I think that this, uh, these new data really provide a lot of help for patients and for their treating physicians. Mm -hmm. Dr. Matthew Myerson, thank you very much for joining us here at eCancer Television. Thank you very much.